still trying. I'm still trying. <laughs> podcast for giving up bad days bad ways unfortunate habits bad friendships bad relationships sometimes just giving up on life because well it's too hard and doing things requires effort as always i'm your host steven and i'm want to thank you yes you for joining me on this my journey of self-improvement of discovery of rambling of trying to be funny because we both know I'm not. I don't have any heroes. And I was kind of thinking about this as uh, I'm getting ready to go see Spider-Man Far From Home. Because if someone were to ask me if I had a hero as a child... It probably would have been some cartoon or a comic book character, because that's the kind of person that I am. Or maybe an author, because I always wanted to be like, you know, I don't know, Tolkien or something. I, I, whatever, I wanted to be like K.A. Applegate, you know. <laughs> but I never really had a hero, and thinking about Spider-Man kind of... Mm, put this little seed in my mind because in the universe of Spider-Man, people look up to him. You know, J. Jonah Jameson tries to take him down and occasionally when he messes up, the city turns against him. Fragile, fragile New York City. But it's always the children who look up to him. And especially in this new iteration from like a few years ago, and then it which was introduced into the Spider Verse and stuff, Miles Morales. A little a little mixed little half Latinx, you know, African American kid who looked up to Spider Man and I was his hero. And not only did he get to meet his hero, not only did he idea I have an uh, this ideal version of view of what Spider Man was, but he far exceeds everything that Spider-Man does. If you don't like comics, I promise you, stick with me, it's gonna work, alright, alright. So, Spider-Man, he can climb walls, he can swing and stuff, right? And he has super strength, right? Miles Morales has, like, everything. He's faster and stronger. He can turn invisible. He has more power and he has exceeded that of his, like, of his hero, right? And I was thinking to myself, like, maybe the reason I'm a failure at life is because I don't have any heroes. I've never really had any heroes. I've never really been, you know, now, I mean, the closest thing, I guess, I mean, my mother is my hero, but it's not the same thing, you know? I think that children, especially, need people to look up to. Because when children are imagining things, right, they're imagining these things that we, as adults, view as impossible. I feel, I feel like I'm getting too existentialist right now, <laughs> but they look at it, right, and they don't really have these preconceived notions. They, they don't really know these barriers until we tell them, until we push these things on them. So they look at these situations, they look at these things, and they imagine Things that we could never. And they feel that way because when you're a child, you see people like astronauts and doctors and firemen doing things that to you as a child seems impossible. 
and that allows you to imagine impossible things. Because I'm sure that Amelia Earhart had uh, someone who she looked up to, you know, uh, Dr. King and 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 Malcolm X and and I don't know, Shaka Khan and Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, you name anybody. Everyone has had someone that they look up to. And all of those people have greatly exceeded their heroes. And I, in addition to not excelling at anything, <laughs> have never really had a hero. I've never really had anyone that I looked up to. And maybe that's because when I was a child, I was raised in Harlem, and I honestly had like a lot of self-loathing because I was surrounded by people who looked at me, looked like me, but who behaved wild, and I was tortured by my peers and blah 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 blah. And even though, like ten years ago, I would have been like, man, I don't care. Why do people color people on TV? I don't care. Like whatever. TV is TV. You know, I didn't have role models on television, really. Like, Martin? You ever see that show I was watching? To Martin in some um, A Different World. And I was like, whoa, some of this stuff here is crazy. And there ain't nothing for you to look up to. I didn't have anyone who I saw doing impossible things other than my mother, who was being a single mother and taking care of me and going to school and having a job. You know, those things seem so mundane to you as a child. I never saw an astronaut and thought that I wanted to go to Mars. I never felt that pull, that push, that motivation. We need heroes. <clears throat> we need to be the heroes for the next generation. <clears throat> We need to, it's it's really hard because I know that when we live this life, it's a lot of self-affirmation and self-motivation that pushes us and that guides us. And that's kind of really what we need. We really need to be behind ourselves. But... Our imagination is informed by the things that we see and we experience. And I didn't really see that. I didn't see on television or read in books about people who looked like me living an amazing, amazing lives. For me, it was just, I don't know, the Huxtables? Or, I don't know, maybe, I didn't see anything. I can't, I can't even push myself. I can't even force myself to imagine. I can't even pretend that I, that I saw someone who looked like me on television doing something that inspired me and that pushed me. I even remember thinking in high school that, the best thing that could be for me, my best opportunity of not being homeless would be to find some girl, have some kids, live in the projects. And even a few years ago when things were really hard, not that they're not hard now, but they were real hard, thinking like, if I could just find a way to get into the projects, then everything would be okay. At least I have a place to live. I might not have big dreams, but at least I'll be okay. Maybe I can have a family. Maybe I could do this again. Because it's important to have heroes. It's important to see people who you identify with. And, you know, I'm 33 now, but when I was like 22, when I was still on 4chan, and... 
Tumblr and people were start, first started to talk about like trans folk and really the LBGT push was like being like real mainstream because it was big obviously before obviously but I mean like <clears throat> in the circles that I was in I looked at that and I didn't really get it and I didn't really care I was like I was like oh this is our first kiss on Dharma and Greg or whatever blah 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 who cares and I see how wrong I was you know, because I look back and I think, like, if I had been, you know, some, like, some cute little queer kid and I just felt separated and different from everyone. And I looked on TV and I didn't see anybody who acted like me, who liked the things that I liked. I would feel isolated. When you don't have people who... are like you the world becomes a very cold place and that's why you know I'm really glad personally to like be an ally for all of my queer folks all my queer friends and that's why even though you know like 10 years ago I used to freaking I used to say the F word or I used to, I used to do all kinds of things and behave in all kinds of ways that I just would not even begin to accept now. Because you know, even 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 that, right? Like, even if you don't have your own heroes, right? Like, I didn't have none. I had nobody who, who I could really look up to, who could really influence and inspire me outside of because you know we are inspired by our families and, and the lives that we live but but there's a whole world you have to be inspired by the media you consume and the music you listen to and and the books that you read and the television you watch and and the video games you play I can go on forever and the food that you eat and the air that you whatever you know um but like even seeing other people being influenced by the heroes and seeing other people who don't look like you or live your experiences, being exposed to that, you know, like, that'll influence, and that'll help, and that'll do so much to guide you, it's not as good as having your own heroes, Lord knows I wish I'd found mine, but I am glad, especially for everyone in my rainbow spectrum, that they found or they can find, or they can look, and they can see someone who looks like them, who loves like them, who has done things that they want to do. I am so happy to be part of a time where there is a push to have, you know, more people more, more ideals expressed everywhere. And that's why, for that too, for my little 20 second political rant, why I hate, like, when we get into these little liberal and conservative bubbles because we completely lose empathy and understanding for other people and we forget that people have their own opinions and their own thoughts. And just because someone's opinion is not like yours, doesn't mean that they hate you or that they're even even exactly wrong however however you know if you're not exposed to other people if you're not if you don't have other people around you then how how could you learn yeah so there you go find your own heroes be a hero and appreciate the heroes of others bam that's it i'm done I feel like I feel like I did a good job. I'm my own hero now. Or maybe I'll be your hero. And that sounds so ridiculous. That sounds so silly, but you know, I could be somebody's hero. Like I suck at this, but there could be some random person who's like, oh, well, what is this on that tune? It's the art of getting up. And they hear me like, wow, this is interesting. Some random person with no charisma, no talent, no planning or forethought has able to purchase equipment and to speak into a microphone. And I found it and listened to it. 
I should do the same thing. Oh. But then they imagine themselves as like a huge star, Lennox Howard Stern or something. And then they become that. And then like five years from now, when I'm like in a cardboard box with my like government mandated implant, I'll be listening to their, their, the smartest living schlup <laughs> brain cast. Life is crazy when you feel alone. And you really shouldn't have to feel alone. That's why I like to express right now in this moment that no matter who you are, who you love, what your ideals or politics are, I love you. And I'm here for you. Because you don't need to be alone. None of us need to be alone. This is a big, big world. A deep, dark, scary place sometimes. And I think that this is like my new thing. Like, people are everything. People are the light, the motivation, the energy. Find your heroes. Find people who love you and if you can't then find I don't know be your own hero or I'll be your hero I want to thank you yes I want to thank you for joining me again if you ever feel like you need someone if you ever feel like you just, I don't know, want to talk, you can be part of the conversation. Art of Giving Up on Facebook. Art of Giving Up on Instagram. DA Art of Giving Up on Twitter. The Art of Giving Up Podcast. No, 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 no. Art of Giving Up Podcast. With no the. Art of Giving Up Podcast on gmail.com. And remember... You're not alone. You're amazing. And be accepting of others. Damn it, I'm gonna jump through these headphones and kick you in the tush. My favorite part of the song, hold on. Alright, I'm not funny, but that's okay. So as always, we are infinitely... Being driven towards, aching for. Oh, wait, 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 I'm doing it wrong. Hold on, I got a new thing. Okay, first, first, I need you to remember happiness is a habit. And we are driving towards, running towards, moving towards. The universe is pulling us to one thing and one thing only. Peace. What if I move
gonna go see Spider-Man. Uh-uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. Spins a web in his eyes, catches these just like flies. Look out! Oh, that was loud. Here comes the Spider-Man.